Hello, and welcome to another episode of Momentum. I'm your host, Philip Allison. Our guest today is Ryden Smith, who is a graduate student in mechanical engineering. Ryden, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Philip, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, glad, very glad to have you um, here with us today. Um, we're gonna jump right in. I know that you are involved in a, in a very cool project that some people might have seen in the news a little bit this summer, and that's a disinfecting toolbox. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is? Yes, sir. So I've had the pleasure of getting to work with the team to design and build a UVC disinfectant toolbox. And uh, what it does is it takes N95 masks, cloth masks, surgical masks, um, and you hang them essentially from a clothesline between two light sources. And over a period of time, it disinfects the masks from the not only the coronavirus, but also a lot of other forms of bacteria present. Uh, and you mentioned masks. I know that, that kind of PPE is a personal protective equipment is a big thing right now with the coronavirus. Um, can it disinfect a lot of different things or is it primarily for masks? So the one that we've built right now is primarily for masks. That's what we've expected for and, and where the need was that initially originated the idea for us to build it. Um, however, the technology is very scalable. So if one day we wanted to do something like gowns or other kinds of PPE that are out there, uh, it definitely could. Um, Things like latex, though, like latex gloves and whatnot, those typically react really poorly to UVC light exposure. So I don't think there would be a possibility for um, creating something to disinfect those. And I guess a, a very basic question is, how did you come up with the idea? It sounds fascinating. Absolutely. Um, so it was a really exciting project. It was, well, I say exciting. It's exciting for us because we're engineers. It's terrible for why we actually had to come up with the idea. But the MSU Longest Student Health Center reached out to uh, Dr. Keenum, who's the president of our university, with an issue of not having enough PPE for their um, physicians and support staff. And so we looked at some methods for recycling those masks or, or to clean them so that it could be reused because at the time they were um, putting them in paper bags and leaving them for three weeks, which also does the same job, but it takes tremendously longer. So we wanted something that would be faster, allow them to cycle over multiple masks on in a day. And that's where we got the idea for the UVC um, disinfectant toolbox. Um, the reason we picked a toolbox is because we wanted something that would be portable. And, and we're engineers, we love to build things, but we picked the toolbox because it's actually made of aluminum and aluminum is reflective to UVC light where not many other materials are. So it really maximized the um, power that we had of the lights in the box, and then also served the purpose of being portable so they could take it to wherever they needed. They didn't have to um, dedicate a full room to a disinfectant room, um, and we thought that would really be best. And, and I guess once you have the mass in the toolbox, how long does it take to disinfect them? So our initial specs based off of prior work in the area, we read a tremendous amount of journal articles, was about 30 minutes. Um, currently, we're working with the vet school to actually test a feline strain of coronavirus in the Recorona killer, and that's enabling us to actually dial down that time a little bit. Um, so I think the LATS study showed that we can neutralize the coronavirus in under five minutes. Um, we're still recommending 15, though, just because that allows a lot of the other bacteria in addition to the coronavirus to be disinfected. Um, yeah, our, our, trimin, our initial estimate tremendously overshot what we were uh, looking for. <laughs> but still, that's pretty impressive that you can take a few masks and put them in a box and be able to reuse them in a, in a very short period of time, which is, again, a lot different than three weeks, which was the previous standard that they were working with. Exactly. We're really grateful to have met our goal there and really be able to, to help them on and once the idea spawned at the uh, longest student health center, it's really kind of taken off from there. Um, we've been able to put together a, a DIY video, which I know you helped do, and it turned out beautiful. And um, we created a set of plans for people to download and build. Um, I should have brought the link with me. But we're really trying to get this out into as many hands as possible to help fight this thing on both in our state and around the southeast and, and really around the nation. Um, as of right now, we're up to about six boxes built, um, with five of them being used in various parts of the southeast. 
which is really exciting to see a technology not only designed and developed here, but then also being used out in the field. Well, I guess, did you guys have to go through a few iterations of the design before you landed on the final design? Or I guess, how long did it take to come up with the design that you're working with now? Um, so this was back in April. We were trying to get something out the door as fast as we could. And so we worked for a solid two weeks on the design and then built the initial prototype. And then from the prototype, we've streamlined the design on such that it's a lot easier to build and all around a little bit simpler. Um, we really sought to use things that were as bought off the shelf as possible to kind of go with our plans. So that way people could actually, you know, look at our plans, go out and buy the materials if they desired and, and then be able to build one themselves. Yeah, you, you mentioned people being able to, to build one themselves. Uh, and, and you said you've built about five or six. How long does it take you to build one now? Um, my team and I are very adept at building them now. It takes us uh, just under a day to start to finish build one. Um, if someone was were just building one for the first time, I would say it would take them probably about three days of, uh, you know, eight hours each day to, to get it built. Um, which in the grand scheme of things, really isn't that terrible. Yeah, but I, I guess the, the few times that you've built it, you've built up some practice and kind of know what you're doing now. Exactly. We're pretty adept at building them now. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the team. Uh, how many people were involved in this project? So there is me on the, the designer and then my advisor, Dr. Will Whittington, and he's overseen what I've done and really helped me a lot on the research aspect of the technology, making sure that we're not giving people something we say will do one thing and, and it really doesn't. And then after that, we have a few um, undergraduate students who also work on the team and, and mainly work with me just getting to build the device. And, and um, I know you say you, you can get, you've done about five or six, do you have plans to build more kind of moving forward or, or kind of what's the, the, the short term goal with this project? As of right now, we're kind of in a holding pattern. I have the, um, we have all the plans out there and we're looking to have folks download and build those. However, it's more of a as needed basis at the moment. Um, we made these at CAVS, the Center for Advanced Vehicular Systems, which is a research organization and, and wasn't looking to get into the manufacturing realm, which is really why we haven't built more of them. Um, but we have tried to make them as accessible as possible. And um, I, I know you mentioned kind of some of the materials, um, and you mentioned primarily a truck toolbox. Um, what kind of lighting is used inside the toolbox, and, and kind of why did you pick some of the design specs that you did? Um, so the lights that we've used up until now have been UVC fluorescent lights. So they are T8 fixtures, similar to what you'd find in any sort of office environment. Um, the only difference being the bulbs or germicidal specifically. And so there are two on um, parallel light fixtures, one on the front side of the box and one on the back side of the box that face each other. And then the masks hang in the middle. Um, that's all the lights inside the box. Outside of the box, we have an orange LED warning light, which indicates when the box is on or off. And then the controls for the box are a dial timer, kind of like what you'd find on some uh, convection ovens. You turn it to the time that you want it to run and then it, it starts ticking and the orange light comes on and uh, it dings when it's done. So you can adjust the time on, on it for when um, you want it to maybe go a little bit quicker to disinfect those masks? Yes, sir. Uh, whenever you put the masks in there, depending on how fast you like, would like it, you can adjust the time five minutes all the way up into an hour. Um, and does the box get hot at all? Or, or I guess are there any kind of con safety concerns in terms of, of disinfecting masks? Um, there were a couple of concerns initially whenever we were building the box. However, we've ran it for hours on end and at no point does it get hotter than warm. So the heat for the actual uh, fluorescence isn't an issue and that's mainly because most of the light is in the UV spectrum um, and so it's not producing nearly as much heat as an incandescent bulb is for instance. Um, another issue that we've run into is you know latex and UV light don't really play nice. So the masks over time, their straps will degrade, which we're recommending about three cleaning cycles per mask on to kind of compensate for that. 
Yeah. And then is there any, are there any issues in terms of, you know, you maybe run a, a, a round of masks and get those cleaned. Um, do you need to wait a certain amount of time before you run another set of masks or, or can you use the box pretty much continuously? You can use the box continuously provided you have a, a household outlet to plug the box into and masks to put into the box. Um, you can cycle them out as, as fast as you like and continue to run it. The um, lights do produce ozone, which is an additional cleaning agent. And so whenever you open the box, it will smell a little bit burnt, but there's nothing to damage you there or the masks. It just serves as a, a further cleaning agent. Well, it sounds like a really fascinating project and one that I know has done a lot of good for, you know, both the, the campus community and, and some of the other folks around the state. Um, and I guess it's really great that you were able to get the support from the university and from CAVS to get this, this project off the ground. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been very grateful for Dr. Whittington letting me lead it and then the other guys working with me on Justin Easley and Cody Abel. They've both been instrumental in getting these built and out the door. Well, we, we just have a minute or two left, and I just w wanted to ask you, I know your, your graduation is coming up. You're, you're graduating with your master's degree in mechanical engineering. Do you have kind of plans for the future already in place? Um, yes, sir. I'm working on applying to jobs all over the place right now. Um, so hopefully going to go work somewhere in North Florida. And um, my girlfriend and I have been dating long distance for three years, so I'm really looking forward to being closer to her and uh, not having to do long distance anymore. Yeah. But I've been very grateful to Mississippi State for all the incredible opportunities I've had here, uh, not just in the building and designing the Corona Killer. Well, and I guess uh, real quickly, um, before you wrap up this semester, do you, are you kind of working on some other research projects beyond this disinfecting box? Yes, sir. We're currently doing a um, concrete and steel friction study on a torsional split Hopkinson bar. Um, it's some material characterization work that we do in the basement of calves. And then <laughs> basically uh, smash things together and then um, measure the response of it. And in addition to that, I'm also taking an impact driver and measuring the um, input torque for another project I'm working on. So it sounds like you've, you've got a full plate here for this last semester um, before you graduate. Yes, sir. Between those things and, and the thesis I'm writing, I have a whole bunch going on. <laughs> well, best of luck to you. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really fascinating to learn a little bit more about the disinfecting box and, and the things that you're doing for the, for the community. That is all the time we have for this episode of Momentum. Remember, you can keep up with all the latest news about the Bagley College of Engineering by following following us on social media. Thanks for watching.